Welcome to WLA Weekly. I'm your host, Tally Campbell. On today's show, I talk to WLA Commissioner Casey Cook. We've got your week four results and more. This is WLA Weekly. The Burnaby Lakers made a handful of roster changes this past week. Blake Madison and Andrew Bromley have been removed from the active roster list, while Tyler Digby and Casey Jackson have been added to the active roster. After an injury, the new West Salmon Bellies have moved their roster around. After the injury of Tyler Richard, Kevin Crowley and Matt Roke have been moved to the active roster list from the holdout list. On Wednesday, June 5th, it seen two of the best teams taking on two of the worst teams in the WLA, but it didn't seem like that. First, Scott Ranger turned to nine will take on the Timmerman, and what a game it was. Shamrock would keep the lead throughout the game, but the Timmerman always fought back. But at 8.59, Scott Ranger would score to win the game 9-8. In the second game of the night, the Lakers were taking on the Thunder, where in the first period it was like the Thunder didn't even show up, but the Lakers scored three good answer goals. And from there, they continued to lead the game to win their first game of the season 9-8. Burnaby's Scott Jones was named first star with four goals on the night. On Thursday night, another close, great lacrosse game took place between Maple Ridge and New West. The Berards would fight to keep the game tight, but it wasn't enough as the Bellies would win 10-8. Logan Shush would put up six points, three goals, and three assists. The Bellies and Alex both had a stellar game on Saturday night in Coquitlam. The A's would go into the third with the lead, however, they could not score in the third, but the Bellies also couldn't get enough goals to win as the A's would take the game 8-7. And finally on Sunday night, it was a doubleheader. First, the Bellies take on the Berards, and the effort from Curtis Dixon with six goals and three assists. The Berards would win 17-5. And lastly, the Lakers would go looking for their third win in a row against the Timmerman, and after a hard-fought 60 minutes, they would get it, winning 12-11. Burner B. Scott Jones netted four goals and one assist, but the Nimos Cody Bremner would net three goals and three assists. After four weeks, the Shamrocks and Berards are tied for first place with 10 points. The Thunder behind them with six, but with two games in hand. Sam Bellies and Burnaby also with six points. The Adnacks have four, while Timmerman are back in, in the pack with two. I got a chance to speak to Casey Cook, the commissioner of the WLA. Take a listen. ...on the new cages and the committee and uh, how all that's going. Well, after a, a very rocky period, uh, that actually has gone quite well, uh, for us at least, in, in the Western Lacrosse Association. The Canadian Lacrosse Association came out with a ruling uh, a weekend ago uh, that uh, senior lacrosse, and that uh, means uh, lacrosse uh, over 21 years of age across Canada, could return back uh, to the masks that were being used the previous year. This was great for senior lacrosse. Uh, there are a lot of other leagues and age groupings uh, that still are, are trying to deal with that issue. But in essence, what it is is that uh, senior lacrosse could go back to the face mask that they were using in previous years. It has, at least for this year, uh, allowed a period of grace and uh, perhaps we can get another certified helmet uh, on the market by that time, I don't know. But it, it gives us time to, to come to terms and to come to grips with the situation uh, of what some people thought were an unfair, uh, uh, not, uh, not unfair, unsafe uh, face mask. So we're going to be able to, uh, to iron those, uh, those issues out. And the committee, how's that going and uh, who's all on it? Well, we uh, uh, actually uh, have a committee struck of, of five people, and it's the first committee that, uh, in my experience, that has uh, got a mix of a makeup on it. It uh, uh, has uh, five uh, people on it, and uh, it's got two players, and a general manager and a coach, and myself. And what uh, we're going to try and do is uh, uh, basically uh, get broad representation and see how we're moving forward. It's going to deal primarily with safety issues, but we're going to keep the committee struck uh, and operating uh, because we're going to try and be uh, of assistance uh, and a resource uh, to other levels of cross. Hopefully they can meet with the same success that we did. The new fighting rule and the new rules this uh, year, how is that going? Well, we, uh, we went out on, the, on a limb a little bit and, and we were, uh, I, I think, uh, a little open with our interpretation uh, of, of how 
that rule was to be interpreted. Uh, we're one third of the way into the season. We played uh, 23 games. We have, I believe, uh, 26 uh, uh, game misconducts, uh, about 18 of them for uh, fighting uh, game misconducts. We've had a situation, I think, where we've had four uh, uh, five-minute majors without game misconducts, and that was the part of it that, that perhaps our interpretation was a little bit different. So our, our interpretation is substantially the same uh, as the CLA, it's it's uh, uh, the fighting is down. Uh, it it uh, I, I think uh, in terms of uh, where we wanted to go with it, we've been fairly successful. I know the CLA uh, had their own thoughts of fighting. The WLA, we've had our own, and and so far, I think that we've uh, found a very acceptable compromise on that. And the other rules that you brought in this year. Well, we have really tried to speed up the game and the primary rule change that, that we instituted and we talked about it somewhat uh, with the governors uh, and the coaches is uh, in a stoppage of play where you drop the ball. Uh, generally, we've been very liberal, liberal interpreting where the ball can be thrown to the referee or uh, uh, further away. Now you need to drop it right on the spot. And if you don't drop it on the spot, uh, you will be assessed a two-minute delay a game. And there's been about 10 or 12 of those in the league thus far. It has really dictated a change. It's, it's, it's been really causative in, in uh, uh, forcing players and teams to think, and uh, it has really sped up the game. We have some other rule changes that, uh, again, to speed up the game. I know people who watch the game a lot probably saw the various scrums that we had between uh, face-offs. Uh, at face-offs and between periods, uh, stoppages of play where players would approach referees and get into these heated discussions. We have tried to stop all of that. Basically, you may ask a question. The referee now raises his hand. Uh, any further dialogue past that, and again, we're into a, a, a delay of game. It has been very successful. We're very happy with it. It's sped the game up, and I think it's really brought up the interest level that, that these scrums and, and scrimmages don't take place at, at face-off circles in between periods. The other thing that we've done is we've tried to make our product quite a bit more family friendly. We've uh, 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 tried to uh, cut down on, on the language that's used and, and uh, the, the expletives that, that simply are not conducive to family, family entertainment. So overall we're pretty happy with what we've been able to accomplish in that respect. We're about a third of the way through the season. How do you think it's going so far? It seems like there's a lot of good close games and one goal games. And what are your thoughts? Well, uh, not to, not to uh, name uh, any, any games or scores. Uh, I know Nanaimo has been uh, in some really close games. Uh, I'd, I'd like it. Uh, that's the one team I'd like it if they were closer to the pack. Uh, parity is a huge thing for us in the WLA. We, we like to think that on any given night, uh, fans can go and watch a game and, and see their favorite team win, at, at least that they're competitive, they're, they're in the ballpark being able to play. Overall, we've got just tremendous competition. We've got, we've got a main pack that nobody is really emerging, uh, going away from. Uh, we're into the second uh, one-third of the season and uh, everybody's still in it. The games are wonderfully competitive. It's great lacrosse. Overall, we're very, very pleased with where we are. Thank you for watching this edition of WLA Weekly. I'm your host, Tally Campbell. Keep it locked right here to VSBN.ca for all your local sports.